street clothes, you're getting cracked up. So cold when I roll, coming out of the hole. Get back, cause I'm out of control. I'm on it. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and if you missed season four, don't worry. We're going to bring you the highlights of the 2007 season here with Lucas Oil on the edge and drifting is just some of the action that we covered. Ken Stout with you, Brian Olson alongside, and this show has covered in excess of 100 different types of racing throughout its four seasons, and this season is good as any, Brian. Yeah, it doesn't matter whether it's wheel stand, big eight competition, enduros, it doesn't matter here on the end because we're willing to go anywhere. Whether you're in the mud, on the sand, flipping in the flip over contest, or playing on the ice on a full wheel machine, we'll be there for you. One thing for sure, it will be exciting and you're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to bring you the highlights of it here. Take a look at the drifting action right off the bat. Talk about some talented drivers. Great in car shots right there. Then we got trailer racing. We've got it all for you here today. Guess what? School buses and nitro methane double-A fuel owners as well. That looked like the Parker family bus, by the way. <laughs> that one just got turned around. Enduro Cross racing in the mud. We're talking about 1,000 horsepower trucks in the mud, putting on quite a show. And our own Stephen Kohler went for a ride in the train race. <laughs> and that looks like his brother right there. So brought his glasses on, safety glasses, everything. One thing about it, man, we'll have plenty of fun. Whether you're going to the hill climb, you're driving one of these things, man. It always happens right here on the edge. The XRRA. All right, the best of 2007. We'll start off with Metal Mayhem coming out of Oregon, Illinois. And it was exactly that. But it was the ladies that were behind the wheel. Very rare that you're ever going to see this when we see cars go upside down. Well, the ladies came out, and let me tell you something. They came with a vengeance, too. <laughs> I mean, there are some angry females right there, and Candy Summers was laying some smack down on some girls out there. May have been a timing type of week when we were all the way out there in Oregon, but I'll tell you what, tempers flare from time to time. This is the guy side of the deal, but uh, it gets that way from time to time, anytime you're at the Demo Derby. Oh, yeah, them guys get right up on the wheel. Wheel stand competition. Speaking of getting up on the wheel at Byron, Illinois, always loaded with excitement. The place is sold out, packed with fans, and this is exactly why. Watch Greg Lidecker. Oh, man, I can remember Woo! this like it was yesterday. <laughs> the key here, man, is we go total extreme. I mean, it's all out. You know, you could go for the highest, the longest, whatever, but when you go for the most extreme, obviously, Lidecker knew exactly what he needed to do. Jason Schubert, who has put on a spectacular show out here in years gone by, certainly didn't lay up short. Three different wheel stands, one run, took out the cones, and the good news for him, he didn't flip it this year. Yeah, you can see that at the front and the back sides of our Lucas Oil on the edge shows all the time when Jason turned that car many, many times, flipped it a couple years ago. All right, the hill climb, Harold Waddell. Some guys out here not quite so fortunate when it came to not flipping, but some of them just spectacular riders as they cleared 20 and 30 foot jumps, a long wheelbase, nitro fed machines, just dancing them up the mountain on the back tire. 13 and a half seconds. Brett Peterson will be next up. This is the open class. This is actually round number two. Again, we're just showing you highlights today. But look at the course. Look how rough it is. It's not like a normal course where it's straight line with a bunch of bumps. You are maneuvering this course all the way up. The bumps, turns, and old deals. Of course, obviously, Gates, you have to stay in between as well. And the goal to get up over the top of the mountain as quickly as possible. Talk about rut it up, man. You can see it. These guys are looking for a line to try to follow, but it's difficult to do. When you're out there and they think it's full speed, some of these things at 90, as you mentioned, maybe 100% nitromethane in the tank. And I tell you, that is tough on your body. And that hill, way over a 45 degree angle. Harold Waddell with another run at it here on the number three bike. And you can see the big paddle tires back there just digging hard. I tell you what, this is tough stuff. And, and when these things buck you, and a lot of times they will, they'll come right over backwards on you. But a 13.8 second run, <laughs> that is bizarre, man. Man, getting it done. All right, let's go to California, Irwindale Speedway. It's a spectacular racetrack, and the best drifters in the world came out to fight for the championship. And of course, Ken, as everybody knows, one of the biggest sports to take off that came from overseas, made its way here into the United States, and it started on the West Coast. However, this is where we are, but I was gonna say, it's making its way all the way back east. I mean, everywhere you go, it's about drifting. Look at the stands, they were backwards this night. Yeah, and it looks like synchronized sliding right there, but here a spectacular move as the car in the back 
Pack was actually able to take over the car in the front. Nobushiki Kumakubo able to do a great job there. And then comes the big American horsepower, Von Gittin with that Mustang on the outside. That's rear wheel drive machine as well. And Vaughn trying to do the job here. He's taking on all those big names from overseas. You've seen it in the movies. You know, it's not something that started in the United States. However, there are American drivers who are making the way in this sport. And Von Gittin not intimidated at all from the world's best. And Kuma Kubo, and look, he just throws in the back He's tires. He's crushing me, man. Baby. <laughs> He's like, bring it on, and they both spun out right at the very end, but it was Von Gittin who took home the win. That was awesome, man. Come on back. We just got the start. Seven season with Lucas Oil on the edge, the DHRA from Baytown, Texas. Yeah, this is the old Black Smoke Corolla class right here, baby. Diesel Hot Rod Association. Watch this pair here. It's a truck and a diesel powered rear engine dragster. Watch the flames out of this Dodge truck in the far lane. Flames coming out of the pipes and then big flames out of the dragster. It wasn't what he was looking for. 927 and 912, over 128 miles an hour each car. And man, I'm telling you the truth, this is something that you ne never even would have dreamt of 15 years ago, but here's what diesels are coming to today. You know, people like Bully Dog have come out with their programmable management systems, and these diesels are really rocking and rolling. Maxis Enduro Cross coming out of Guthrie, <laughs> Oklahoma, and Las Vegas, Nevada. Not a game for the meek, I can promise you that. And at Guthrie, Oklahoma, when you start out, look how clean the quads are when they first get started, but they're in the mud, baby, and they mix it up right there in the first stirred. They're stacking them up, baby. <laughs> Didn't take long for them to get hooked up, but they finally got them disconnected. As we take a look at this battle for second place, Sean has Cody Miller. Timmy Farr had already checked out, was way up front, but look at these guys dealing with the mud and then the boulders. That's a part of the track I was talking about when I said they start out clean, then they get pretty ugly and pretty muddy. There's your leader, and I believe we'll win this whole round with Tim Farr. Yeah, Tim Farr, a pro, has been doing it for a long, long time, and anytime he shows up, he's going to be a threat and tough to beat. And just like we will and have seen so far in the hill climb, these, these courses are tough on your body. You really got to be prepared physically. Man-made course, and now we'll go to the two-wheel action because life wasn't any easier for these guys. <laughs> you cross over telephone poles, then you got to go through the gravel pit, the big gravel pit, then you act like you're over in the, the section where you're doing landscaping, and it's just crazy. Through the mud, trying to keep that thing underneath you, and you were talking about the, the poles. I mean, there's some gigantic... <laughs> Light <you>, poles. <laughs> the tires get all wet and muddy, and... Lazuziak was able to hold on as he brought home the win, and the Niter, who was out there, he didn't fare quite as good as he wanted to. And in He's the process, front. he just let her run, baby. He's up from the tractors. That is gonna knock him off the tires there for a moment. I love it. <laughs> All right, we're gonna keep you on four wheels here and take you ice racing. Again, just you know, unique conditions and situations and. The guys out here in the cars also having some fun. Not afraid to put a fender on you, by the way. Oh, it's kind of funny because these ice courses, they actually start out some on pavement, some on dirt. And we, you know, when they build the thing up to be in an ice course, right there you see a little bit of brown. That's actually the, the property. That's what's under all the ice. And in those corners, you go around and you slide pretty hard, boom, and suddenly you might hit sort of a dry spot. This is a great race. The leader had checked out. And it looked like he was going to drive away, but then eventually he started receiving some pressure for second place, and the battle was on. Yves Legree was really hoping to just drive away with one. And you know what's funny is you think, well, they can't get traction on ice, but they stud these tires front and rear. They stud them all the way around. And really, they're making pretty good steam as they make way around here. Driving them much like a rally car, you know, really pitching them sideways. Now we'll go to the XRRA in Attica, Indiana. And, you know, rock crawling used to be a slow, methodical competition. It's not the case anymore. Now it's a full out race. And this is just really, really crazy. If you watch these things, Ken, and you watch the suspensions on them, look at that. That is a three and a half foot drop right there. There is a great view. One of the greatest things about On the Edge, we're gonna give you every angle we can possibly find so you can enjoy this thing and sit in your couch at home. Really unique machines. They're competing here at the Badlands, about an hour west of Indianapolis. They actually build these vehicles at the Badlands, and that one doing a spectacular job 
You can see the speed that they carry, and then look at the obstacles they have to get up and over. Talk about technology and suspension. Yeah, look at this thing. I mean, this one side, one side could be two foot higher, maybe even more than the opposite side. In fact, from corner to corner, these things have a variation of like four feet. So, you know, and another one of these things on the edge that you'll find out. Again, another sport where physical fitness is so terribly important. Doug Bigelow, your winner there. Now let's go to the mud bogs in Richmond, Louisiana. <laughs> Man, talk about insanity. Yeah, we go to the place where physical fitness don't mean nothing. <laughs> Bobby Joe Brown lined up here. A thousand horsepower, and you dive into the sippy hole, baby, yeah. and you hold on because you can't see anything. Probably one of our funnest races that we did in 2007, man. And I tell you right now, now there are co-drivers in here as we watch Beryl Richardson, the AK-47, pick up a heat win. Here's Mo Money and Steiger. Allen and Hensley get matched up right here. Now, you know, some truck on the right, no co-driver, but the one on the left actually has a co-driver. Tell them which way to go. They got windshield wipers and all, but this is crazy. This is oh, a crazy event. You can see the smoker there, the diesel truck that was in the competition, really holding his own and doing an awesome job. And Robert Allen with Mo Money, man. <laughs> he was after it. He was on it. Come on back to Lucas Oil on the A's. the best of the 2007 season here of Lucas Oil on the Edge, the night of thrills from Rockford, Illinois. And we always make our trip out to Rockford, Illinois at some time or another. And this particular year was special because our very own onboard cameraman, Mr. Stephen Kohler, got in the back of the train and he was trying to hold on. And what you do is the back car is kind of the brake car here. We're in the final lap right here. The final car is the braking car. In this case, it's a truck but the front car's got the power and the steering. The middle one's really nothing more than a solid link. And Steve Kohler, in the first time he's ever been in one, is the winner that night, unbelievable. But without a doubt, the most spectacular and probably the funniest event we covered at Rockford this year had to be the skid plate race, where they literally put skid plates underneath the rear tires. And as you can see, not quite as easy to drive as you might imagine. It's and look, he throw it in reverse right there. <laughs> Gary Oscarson on the wheel, baby. It's a wild, wild thing, man. It's all part of the night of the thrills <laughs> at, 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 over at Rockford, man. And it's, again, it's one of those things you just got to kind of be there and see it to believe it. All right, the National Sand Drag Association brought us some excitement out in Prim, Nevada. Yeah, we told you we was going to bring you a little bit of everything, and here we go. It's top alcohol-type dragsters on dirt in Prim, the Valley, just 30 miles west of Las Vegas. They race 300 feet and go 255. Whoa! That's not the way you want to end one. Sometimes they're just as hard to get stopped, too. And you wonder why they only go 300 feet? Well, that's exactly why right there. The inconsistencies of the dirt at speeds of 140-plus miles per hour can cause havoc in a hurry, and they do get quicker and faster. Dennis Reich and Shane Switzer came out to do battle. And again, just basically like the pavement racing, right? Oh, big wheel stand. How about that, huh? The I love this fuel stuff, version man. right here. These guys burning nitro methane, just like the big boys on the asphalt. All right, now let's go to Arena Trucks in Arkansas, Wisconsin. Oh, beautiful downtown Arkansas. Look how they spell it. <laughs> and this is another of those crazy muddy, if you get mad, I'm gonna flip you on your top kind of races right here. Yeah, that's how you get even with your buddy that lives down the road yeah. a little bit. <laughs> Chad Chad Brendel, come by the house when you're gone. <laughs> <laughs> Chad Brendel really schooled everybody. All right, the figure eight and flagpole race coming out of Minnesota was part of the 07 season. And the flagpole race really brought us some excitement as well. Oh, man. And some big hits in the figure eight race. And then we roll right into a fire right afterwards. You watch a driver trying to get out of that machine. Final lap, baby. Was he trying to get out? The action was on. Steve Motley trying to hang on. And you can see, man, he had some competition here tonight. Yeah, buddy, I'll tell you what. You don't want to meet up in the middle. We saw the results of that just a few minutes ago. And he'll take the checkered right there. Congratulations to the 67 car. Now let's go to the flagpole race. This is the first as well for Lucas Oil on the edge. Yeah, you take the car around both ends of the track, but when you come in the middle, instead of going the intersection, you can watch it right here in just a moment. You actually got to do a great big U-turn. In fact, you got to make it a small U-turn around this flagpole. This was another one of the great fun races. They all are, for that matter. But watch it right about here. You're going to go in there, 
going to go around this flagpole, and sometimes it gets pretty busy right here, particularly at the front of the race. There's three cars around the flag <laughs> at the same time. Sometimes you can even get spun out if you're later getting in there. Yeah, and it was lab traffic that caused problems there for the leader. Come on back for more action. It's been an action-packed show here, bringing you the best of the 2007 season. Now it's time for the figure eight and the train race coming out of Madison, Wisconsin. This is a lot of fun as well. And the train race we talked about a little bit earlier, you know, we've seen the train race at Rockford, Illinois. It also takes place here. One of the best in the business in the red, white, and blue. That's the group that won when we were at Rockford with our main man, Steve, on board at the time. Gary Oscarson driving the red, white, and blue truck. Scott Like was the brakeman at this particular event on the last lap, trying to make a pass for the win. Could not get the job done, though, and they'll take the win. Now we move to the trailer race at the same event. You can bring any kind of trailer you want. It's Katie Barr the door. There goes my boat. <laughs> but when you cross the finish line, you still got to have a trailer on the back. Don't matter if it's one of the campers, doesn't matter if it's carrying a boat. It can be a lawnmower trailer as far as that goes, but when you cross the strike with the checker, it's still going to have a trailer next to it, or behind it, rather. Caterpillar Miller causes some havoc there to your trailer as well, and we're going to stay on this weekend. <laughs> I know it. All right. I had a lot in that trailer, too, man. <laughs> and we got a little more serious here with the stars of karting coming out of the PRI show in Orlando, Florida. The biggest names in racing inside of this race. This is the Carter's division. Matt Jaskell in there, Joel Miller, and Joel Miller taking a big hit right there in the Tony cart. Gary Carlton coming up out of the shifter category, now stepping into the 100cc tag category, putting on a show for everybody. Hey, we were under the lights in Orlando, Florida, again, part of the performance racing industry trade show. And like Ken said, the best in the business. And right there with the checker, Gary Carlton. Carlton doing a good job. Joel Miller in second, Matt Jaskell in third on the top card. And then those guys, the top six, didn't go in and run for the Masters division and talk about some huge names. There you go, right off the bat. Buddy Rice was back there. He was trying to get to the front. Gary Carlton was able to get passing in one of the most physical racetracks in the country. Michael Valiente up front had put on a spectacular show. Gary Carlton was trying to track him down in the final lap. Just a little too far back, but keep in mind, Gary Carlton had to start almost dead last in this race, and in 50 quick laps, came up to second place behind Michael Valiente, who took the checkered flag and a spectacular show of karting. Match Race Mania from Joliet, Illinois. The best of the 2007 season continues, and you knew this one, up hand and personal. Two of the biggest names, Animal Jim, and then how about the Tameless Tiger? Arnie the Farmer Bezik, man. It was a great night right there in Joliet. And the Pontiac taking on the old Ford. Now, that was not the type of run that Arnie usually can make. Watch, it's real soft off the starting line. Then that nitrous will kick in right there. Animal on a pretty good run. Now, Animal's car on the left side of the screen is a Ford, and it does not have spray, or nitrous as we call it. See the fire coming out of the pipes there for the farmer. He's got a lot of spray, but it looks like it's primarily coming out of the left side of the motor. Great, great, great night of racing there. All right, we're going to take you to where they put the big speed down in the water. Lake Rescue is what they call it. But the fastest boats in the land come out, including David Callen and John Cosker. This a 200 plus mile per hour turbine machine. The course one mile long. They go from a standing still start. And right here, 209 miles an hour dancing across the finish line. Wow. Spectacular. Hey, OTE fans, make sure you log on to NewWaveTV.com for the official OTE merchandise, hats, T-shirts, and DVDs, not just of this show, but of the entire past four seasons. Check it out today. Want to get straight? Oh, no! <laughs> and great reproduced machines. As some of the cars you're looking forward to. It's hard for me to do the old <laughs> Ryan Seacrest. Hey, everyone's here to watch the football game. Who cares? Let's just get me on camera and talk. Hey, everybody, come see how good I look. I look good. Really good. Really, really good. More cars are starting coming up from PR. Cars are starting? Hello there, they're starting the cars. <laughs> the nice thing for us is there is some turns. The rig handles real well in the turns. Um... <laughs> cool. Just saying spell your names and your titles so you get that right. Okay. You don't, don't touch my mic. Okay, I'm sorry. 
All of these riders in the 700 class had to qualify yesterday, but they did so on the course right next to the main course today. These guys have to... They... Well, guys, standing next to me is the top dog coming into this event here at the Badlands, the XX, XX. The number five bike of Jason Smith. He's got 100 pounds of... Wait, let me check for a bat in the belfry. No, you're good. Two classes, got a booger up my beak. <laughs> these are the times in your life where you look, you reflect, and you don't feel so good about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent stuff there. Hey, they left me out for once. I, Thank you. I can't believe that. <laughs> they didn't leave me out. That bumped me out. <laughs> All right, here comes the crash segment, and it was wild and woolly oh, in 2007. Oh, oh man.